Hello, in this video we're going to derive the firm's short run cost functions from this production function. So here's the firm's production function. We're going to let the wage equal $50 and the price of capital R equal $500. First thing we're going to do is solve the production function for L. So taking this K plus L and multiplying everything through by that. The left-hand side looks like this. Simplifying the left-hand side by multiplying that Q through what's in parentheses. And then subtracting Q times L from both sides. This QL, subtracting that from both sides. Then on the right-hand side, we're going to factor out an L term. And now we're going to divide through by 4k minus q. And now since we're talking about short run costs, let's fix capital at 2. We could fix it at any level, but let's fix capital at 2. So where I have a k in this function here, I'm going to replace it with 2. So in the numerator, now we have 2 times q. And in the denominator here, this 4k, it's 4 times 2. So that's where this 8 is coming from. Next, the cost function is the variable cost plus the fixed cost, where the variable cost is wage times units of labor, and the fixed cost is the price of capital times units of capital. Now we're going to substitute everything into this function. 50 for W, L we're going to plug in 2Q divided by 8 minus Q, R is 500, and K is 2. So making those four substitutions, we get this. Just rewriting that last result. Now we're going to do 50 times 2Q and 500 times 2. We get this cost function. So this cost function will apply if output is less than 8 units. So if output is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0, or 1, this is what the cost function will look like. If output is 8 or greater than 8, then our costs will be undefined or infinite. It's The cost curve will be vertical then at 8 units of output. And the reason for that, if, for example, if Q is 8, then you're just dividing through by 0. So undefined or blows up to infinity. If Q is 9, it doesn't make sense for variable cost to be negative. So this cost function only makes sense if Q is less than 8. Fixed cost is 1,000. Variable cost is the other component here. Remember, total cost is variable cost plus fixed cost. So that's variable cost. Average fixed cost is fixed cost divided by output or 1,000 divided by Q. Average variable cost is variable cost divided by Q. So taking variable cost and dividing it through by Q, we get this equation here. Average total cost is average variable cost plus average fixed cost. So average variable cost plus average fixed cost gives us average cost. And now let's get marginal cost. We can get marginal cost by taking the derivative of variable cost or the cost equation. I'm just going to use the variable cost equation going to get the same result. So we need to use the quotient rule here. It'll come in handy. And a reminder of the quotient rule. We can think of this variable cost equation as one function divided by another function. So we got a function g, which is a, a function of q, and function h, which is a function of q. And so the quotient rule is to follow this step right here. Let's define these things. So once again, this function g of q is just the numerator. The derivative of that is 100. So we'll make a substitution eventually in here uh, where we see this g prime. We're going to put 100. The h function here is the denominator. And if we're to take the derivative of 8 minus q, you just get minus 1. So substituting everything into the quotient rule formula, I'm going to get something like this. So notice here the denominator is squared. So I am squaring that 8 minus q. And now simplifying that, 
you get marginal cost of 800 divided by 8 minus Q squared. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.